Right then guys, I'm here for the 27th episode in my Stewards Manager series on Grand Prix World. Now I do just want to quickly say, and to be fair, this is probably the 6th time, roughly, that I've mentioned this in this series alone, but I do just want to apologise for the massive gap in time between when I uploaded the previous episode and this one. The consistency of uploads in this series has been atrocious, and I can only really blame myself for that, so I do just want to apologise for that yet again. So since it's been such a long time since the previous episode was uploaded, I should give you guys a quick refresher on where we're at. So of course, we're towards the end of the 2001 season, and in the Drivers' Championship, Michael Schumacher is leading 57 points, that's 13 ahead of Heinz Howard Frensen in second. Damon Hill and David Coulthard, the two McLaren drivers, tied in third with 40 points. Realistically, no one else is going to be challenging Schumacher for the championship lead. Moray was too far back, Fizzy Keller's even further back, and teammates to Michael Schumacher. Takaki and Herbert mathematically can win the championship, but we know they're not going to, and no one else, even mathematically, potentially can. The fact Schumacher is actually leading the championship is a recent development, because Michael Schumacher, as you can see, has won the past three races. So, over half of Michael Schumacher's points have been accrued recently. So, I mean, that's the thing, if Michael Schumacher can score 30 points in three races, so can Frenson, so can Hill, so can Coulthard. So, the Drivers' Championship is still far from done, because no driver has been consistently quick all year. And in the Constructors' Championship, that is much closer, well, certainly at the top. Ferrari have got 84 points, McLaren 80, Benetton 73. Then it's a massive drop down to us, Stewart, we're fourth. 35 points, 7 ahead of Williams, that is fairly comfortable, not impossible that Williams could beat us, but 7 points, I mean 7 more points, because we're still capable of scoring points, so Williams would have to score 7 points more than us in the remaining 4 races, possible but not massively likely. As always, we're going to be checking the latest news and announcements in Formula 1. So there's nothing too interesting on the first page, although Tor Takaki, happy with a podium, but wants to do better. This is coming from Tor Takaki, a man who famously, in his Formula 1 career, achieved nothing. And he wants to do better. I mean, I love the ambition, but this is Tor Takaki we're talking about. But anyway, he has been good for us. This year, I cannot deny, 22 points, he's beaten his teammate Pedro Diniz, so fair play to Takaki, and he's paying us for the privilege. Anyway, Tyrrell have got a landmark works deal with Peugeot engines, so they're going to be sticking with Peugeot, because they're currently using their engines anyway. So that's just a deal that's going to be carrying on. Prost will be getting tyres from Bridgestone, Arrows fuel from Texaco, and that should be pretty much it. McLaren have filled up all of their sponsor slots, as have Williams, and, well, Peter Sauber has been named the least effective manager in Formula 1, and Jean Todd, of course, Jean Todd is officially the best manager in Formula 1. Before we get into the Belgian Grand Prix, there is one thing which I need to talk about first, or probably a better way of wording it is there's a story I need to tell, and it really is a story, and it starts with the previous Grand Prix, the Hungarian Grand Prix, where during it, my team discovered the details of Ferrari's level 2 power brakes. And as always, I had the option to either report it, or copy it. Now, reporting it wouldn't have done anything, it certainly wouldn't have benefited the team, but as you'll see in a little bit, reporting it would have been a total waste of time. So I decided to copy it, and amazingly, we were successful. And I think that's down to my 4 star rated chief mechanic, Paul Diggins, who is, as we can see, very highly skilled, and I do believe your chief mechanic's rating does determine your percentage chance at successfully copying other teams' driver aids. So that meant, after the Hungarian Grand Prix, I had Ferrari's level 2 power brakes and our own designed level 1 traction control system ready to either construct or send off to the FIA. 
First off, I sent off the level 2 power brakes, the system which we copied from Ferrari to the FIA. Now, the FIA turned it down. Now, in of itself, that's not great, but what makes the whole situation worse is that that system is legal. We know it is, Ferrari ran it by the FIA earlier on this year, that is a legal power brake system, but crucially, when fitted onto a Ferrari, because seemingly, in the FIA's eyes, that system is legal on a Ferrari, but bolt it onto a Stewart, it's illegal, they've got a problem with it. We've seen the FIA's biases time and time again, but I can't really do anything about it. Well, imagine, imagine if I went up to the FIA, imagine if I walked in to Max Mosley's office and said, look, that power brake system I submitted, I know it's legal because I copied it from Ferrari. I'd be indicting the team by doing that, and that's the thing, is I can easily expose the FIA's biases and double standards, but not without throwing myself and the team under the bus. So the FIA are free to carry on as they always have done, but really that's superfluous detail to why I'm really talking about this, because seemingly there's a glitch in the game, and I didn't know this existed, but seemingly if the FIA turn down, if they reject one of your driver aids, then you are restricted from constructing any driver aids. I presume it goes away once you've done another race, and to be honest, in retrospect, that's probably what I should have done. I probably should have just done the Belgian Grand Prix and then come back to it. But at the time, I was extremely confused, because what I did next was take the traction control system designed by the team, run it by the FIA, and they deemed it to be legal. So then I went over to the construct option, but it wasn't clickable. So at the time, I was extremely confused, and as I said, in retrospect, I probably should have just done the Belgian Grand Prix and the Construct option probably would have come back. But what I did instead was I started designing a Level 2 Active Suspension Unit, and then suddenly, the second I started designing it, the Construct option next to the Traction Control appeared. So I clicked on it, went over to the manufacturing screen, manufactured the driver aid, but the driver aid I manufactured wasn't the traction control, it was the level 2 active suspension. So now I was even more confused and I repeated the process, so I started designing a level 2 automatic gears just to check what I thought had happened had actually happened, and sure enough, I start designing the automatic gear system. The construct option next to the traction control appears, click it, manufacture the driver aid, I have manufactured a level 2 automatic gears. And finally, I suss out what's happening, so I decide to see what happens if I click to start designing a new traction control unit. Even though I've already designed one and ran it by the FIA, I thought, maybe this will fix it. So I start designing a traction control, sure enough, the construct option reappears again, click it, manufacture, done. The loop has ended. Finally, I have manufactured the level 1 traction control unit. And that explains this. As you can see, these are the driver aids I already had, but the traction control, eventually, I was able to manufacture it. However, the active suspension and automatic gears, systems which we in no way should have, absolutely none at all. The level 1 system is fine, but level 2 the FIA don't like it. Well, actually, it's more than that. The FIA don't know I have them. And it's no surprise, because what we did should have been impossible. Manufacturing three driver aids in between two races is incredibly strange, but that's not impossible. What is impossible is the active suspension and automatic gears. Yeah, sure, we didn't run them by the FIA, but we started designing them, completed the design, and then manufactured them in between two races. That should be impossible. Doing one should be impossible. Two, totally impossible. Because you can start designing a driver aid, but you have to do at least one race before you can complete the design. But here, we did two without doing a single race. That should be impossible, yet we did it. Although I can't really reap the benefits of it because two of them are illegal. And that's the thing is I am not going to be running those driver aids in this race because we stand far more to lose 
than we do to gain by running driver aids. So that's the thing, is if you look in the Constructors' Championship, all of the teams ahead of us are way ahead of us. There's no way we can catch them up. But Williams are only a few points back. I could use my extra drive race to get a slight pace advantage in the races, but then I risk being disqualified and that could be potentially disastrous. Well, let's say hypothetically in the next race, we do well and let's say one of my drivers finishes in third and Williams get one of their drivers into fourth. So we would score four points, Williams three, so we would outscore Williams by one point. But what if the FIA found one of those illegal driver raids, or another team? Because another team could easily discover one, especially if two are fitted at the same time. If we had two illegal driver raids, another team could easily find it and then report it to the FIA, assuming the FIA don't find it themselves. What happens then? Well, my driver might cross the line in third, but suddenly we lose the four points and the third place finish, and then Williams, their driver would move up from fourth to third, they'd score four points, we'd score none, so suddenly we'd go from outscoring Williams by one point to them outscoring us by four points. And with both championships in their current state, we cannot afford to do that. We've got nothing to gain from bending the rules, but certainly something to lose. And that's why I'm going to be entering the 2001 Belgian Grand Prix, crucially, with two fully legal cars. No major surprises up at the very front. Damon Hill on pole position, Michael Schumacher in second. I should point out this qualifying session was held in light rain conditions. But that's what makes it incredibly strange once you get below second place, because normally in third place I would have assumed Jean Alesi. But no, he's in seventh. I mean, that's still a decent qualifying performance, especially given the Jordan car. But then again, Eddie Irvine is in eighth. Although I'm not too sure on Eddie Irvine's wet weather stat, it might actually be quite good. But anyway, Damon Hill, Michael Schumacher, Frentzen, Fizzy Keller, Coulthard, Pedro Diniz in sixth. Diniz was quicker than the wet weather specialist of Jean Alesi. And behind Alesi you've got Irvine, Johnny Herbert in the first Williams, Mika Salo, then Tuero, then both Minardis, Tortokaki in 14th, beating Moreira, I mean, Moreira. He's actually done quite well this season, Moreira, well he won a Grand Prix, which is still to this day one of the most surprising things we've seen in this series, Moreira. A guy who is capable just about, given one of the best cars on the grid, just about capable to win a race given the right circumstances, but in qualifying in wet conditions, useless. 15th place behind even Takaki. Then you've got Vert, Montemini, Trulli, Zonta, Nakano, Sarazan and Jan Magnussen outside of the 107% time and will not be taking part in the race. My initial reaction when I saw the Belgian Grand Prix, the race, was going to be held in dry conditions. Initially, I thought that was quite good, I was quite happy about it, but thinking about it, I'm not so sure. I mean, certainly it's good for Takaki, because he, as we saw in qualifying, he's useless in wet conditions. So it's good for him, but Diniz was quite good in a light rain qualifying session. Well, actually, if I remember correctly, I believe... Very recently we got a new set of intermediate tyres and possibly that could have been enough, an improved intermediate compound, that could have been enough for Diniz to beat Jean Alesi. Well, wet or not, we did quite well. Pedro Diniz finished the 2001 Belgian Grand Prix just behind, half a second behind Michael Schumacher. So that's 5th place for Pedro Diniz, 4th place for championship leader Michael Schumacher. Heinz Al Frensen, his closest championship rival, won. Giancarlo Fisichella 2nd, Damon Hill 3rd. Eddie Irvine beat Jean Alesi actually by the looks of it. Jean Alesi didn't finish the race for whatever reason. Tuatakaki, massive improvement. He beat David Coulthard, Moreira, so actually... Takaki even moved up more positions than Moreira, but even still, Moreira up from wherever he qualified, 15th wasn't it, to 10th, even still that's not a point. Takaki 7th place, very good, but 8 thousandths of a second 
away from scoring a point. And further on down the order, Williams, 11th and 12th, really not a good Grand Prix for them, which is great for us by extension. Rosset retired with a engine failure, and then Alacy and Trulli both out with hydraulics failures. Oh, the Drivers' Championship is certainly getting interesting. Heinz Frentzen, only 6 points behind Michael Schumacher. Damon Hill, only 16 behind. David Coulthard, 20 points behind Michael Schumacher. So it's certainly still a four-way title fight. But Frentzen and Schumacher, incredibly close. 6 points separating those two. So, anybody's guess. But I reckon a German driver is going to win the championship. No, they're not. What on earth is the press talking about? Ferrari apparently, according to this unknown, unnamed journalist, Ferrari must now be certain to win this year's Constructors' Championship. Of course they're not. They're only 9 points ahead of McLaren, 10 ahead of Benetton. Ferrari are by no means certain. Who on earth wrote that? In other, yet hopefully more based in reality news, Salba will be buying fuel from Repsol, Jordan engines from Peugeot, now that's, that's an interesting move and probably a backwards one because Jordan currently have Mercedes engines, of course the Mercedes engine teams are ourselves, Salba and Jordan, yet Jordan in a partnership with Peugeot next year, that's an interesting move. Well anyway, Ricardo Zonta has signed for Salba, and then is there anything else interesting? Arrows have fully produced a, or produced a full up sponsorship package, and Serve Prost, Serve Tyrrell, Alan Prost has been named the least effective manager in F1. Oh, okay, okay, sure. Yes, Ferrari are going to win the Constructors' Championship, and Jean Todd is the greatest manager alive, the greatest human being alive. Yeah, sure, because the Belgian Grand Prix really provided evidence for that. I mean, I like Jean Todd. Very intelligent, impressive, accomplished guy, but favourite manager, motorsport fans, have picked Jean Todd as their favourite. I guess it does say favourite, not best, but in this game's logic, they're one and the same. Favourite manager, based solely on the previous Grand Prix, which is what these polls are based on. Jean Todd, best or favourite manager based on the Belgian Grand Prix, that is inarguable. There's a lot of design work to talk about, so let's start off with the first one. As you can see, we have finished improving this season's chassis for an unprecedented, for us at least, an unprecedented third time. As you can see, it's the C model. So, finished, done, in time for the Italian Grand Prix, so we're going to construct that, and the chassis rating is going to be 78%. 78%, bearing in mind, when this season started, our chassis was rated 60%, we then upped it to 66, then 72, now, as you can see, 78%. In fact, it's the D-Model chassis. Of course it is, yes. The D-Model. That's the main piece of design work, but by no means the only one. As you can see, we've improved the performance of the clutch. Now, the reason I picked the clutch specifically is because, as you can see... Hang on a second. Ferrari have designed and FIA approved a level 3 traction control system. Now, I might be mistaken, but I believe that is... Yeah, it is. That's the first Level 3 driver aid in Formula 1 at all. Well, certainly the first one that we publicly know about, the first one the FIA know about. Well, there you go, fair play to Ferrari, because they're certainly setting the trend. Anyway, that's not why I clicked onto this screen, because... As you can see, technology, the clutch and electronics will be carried on over into the following season. Everything else is going to be reset. That's why I'm focusing, now I'm doing technology work, because, well, it's pointless designing a new chassis because we cannot possibly at all... I mean, it's impossible for anyone, any team at all, to improve another chassis. If they were to start from scratch, improve a chassis before the end of the season, so... Since we can't even improve a chassis, but even then I was doing technology work whilst also improving the chassis. That's how many designers we've got and how good our morale is. 
So since the clutches and electronics are being carried over to the following season, that's why I'm putting effort into those two areas specifically. And in terms of driver aids, well, we've got a level 2 power brake system, our own designed one, not copied from another team. We've designed it from scratch. Let's see if the FIA actually like it. No, I don't know why I bother. I have to say, I do not envy Jean Todd or Ron Dennis or David Richards because right now, this point in the season is incredibly tense. All of them can still manage their team to a Constructors' Championship win. And also, in the Drivers' Championship, you've got one Ferrari, one Benetton and two McLaren drivers in contention for the Drivers' Championship. Whereas, for me, the season is actually quite boring, or certainly there's not much at stake. I could lose places, I can't really gain any. Well, perhaps in the Drivers' Championship, but I actually don't care for that, especially and in the Constructors' Championship, the odds of Williams... Well, actually, if you're going based off of the previous race, the odds of Williams scoring points isn't even that high. And the odds of Williams outscoring us before the season ends is quite slim. So, for me, this is going to be an incredibly relaxing, or fairly relaxing, Italian Grand Prix. But there's still an awful lot to play for up at the top. So Jean Todd, Ron Dennis and David Richards, they will certainly not be relaxing during this 2001 Italian Grand Prix. It's another qualifying session affected by a smattering of rain and as such, another pole position for Damon Hill. Michael Schumacher in second yet again, but this time, Jean Alessi qualified in third place. He beat Fizzy Keller, Coulthard, Frentzen, Deniz, that's why Deniz qualified outside of the top six. But actually, if you look at the gaps, the time gaps, Damon Hill beat Michael Schumacher by eight tenths of a second. Jean Alessi, one second behind Michael Schumacher, but fractionally ahead of Giancarlo Fisichella, but then again Fisichella 1.1 seconds slower than his teammate. They're both driving the same car, well there can be some minor alterations with driver aids, but there shouldn't be unless one is running an illegal car, which would be incredibly strange, especially, well if anyone would be running an illegal car it would be Fisichella because he's got Nothing to lose, which would make it even worse, actually. But even still, Fizzy Keller 1.1 seconds slower than his teammate. But that's nothing compared to the gap between David Coulthard and Damon Hill. Both McLaren drivers, both in the same car. David Coulthard was 2.4 seconds slower. That's astonishing. Heinz Alfredson, though, the quickest. Benetton driver, he's in sixth. Pedro in his seventh. Then you've got Irvine in the other Jordan in eighth. Then Sarlo Herbert as the leading Williams in tenth. Moreira in eleventh. That's an improvement. But then again, this is Monza, a more power orientated circuit. So perhaps less driver reliant. Perhaps. Certainly eleventh is. Nothing really to write home about anyway, and he was 1.1 seconds slower than his teammate anyway, so really nothing at all to brag about for Moreira. Then you've got Collard, Verts, Truly, Takaki, then Tuero, God, Tuero down in 16th in the other Williams, then Rossett, Nakano, Montemini, Sarazan, Zonta, both Salbers in the 1 minute 34s, and Jan Magnussen, yet again, slower than the 107% cutoff time, and yet again, is not allowed to take part in the race. Another podium finish for Stewart, and a fourth place. Seven points scored total from Stewart. Denise in third, Tour de Kaki fourth. That's amazing. Seven points in one race. We still beat Williams. Johnny Herbert finished in second. Fantastic result for him personally, but we still outscored Williams by one point. And Michael Schumacher won. Well, there you go. In fact, actually, lots of big names aren't there. Moreira. Well, actually, Moreira isn't really a big name, is he? Cool Fard in sixth, but Hill's gone, Frentzen's gone, Fizzy Keller's gone. Well, certainly they're not in the top half. Now, this was a dry race, but to be honest, just looking at how many 
of the championship contenders retired, I don't think the weather actually mattered. Anyway, just to run through the race results, Michael Schumacher won the 2001 Italian Grand Prix. The Tafosi will be loving that. Johnny Herbert finished in second, Diniz third, Takaki fourth, Moreira for Benetton in fifth, the only Benetton driver to finish the race, and David Coulthard beaten. Beaten by Moreira, but he is still McLaren's highest finishing driver, probably only finishing driver, and certainly he did still score a point. That meant Eddie Irvine, Mika Salo, and Lacey. John and Lacey didn't score a point, but as I said, this was a dry race following a light rain affected qualifying session. Yep, just as I thought, Fizzy Keller, Frenson, and Hill all retired from the race. Fizzy Keller with an engine failure, Frenson with a hydraulics issue, and Damon Hill retired yet again, no surprise there, but this time he's only got himself to blame. One other driver I want to quickly point out is Esteban Tuero, who finished the race in 16th. 16th, that's atrocious, his teammate finished in 2nd. And yes, I know that Tuero started much further down the grid than his teammate did, but even then, that's not an excuse. You can't say, oh well I did understandably poor in the race because I was rubbish in qualifying. That's not really an excuse you can use as a driver, but even ignoring that, Tora Takaki started one place ahead of him, yet Tora Takaki finished in 4th place, so Tuero's got no excuse. Unsurprisingly, that race has had quite a drastic impact on the Drivers' Championship. Hill and Coulthard are now mathematically out of it. Frenson is still technically in with a shot of winning the championship, but he's 16 points behind Michael Schumacher. 16 points behind with only two races left to go, so for Frenson to win the championship, Schumacher in the final two races is going to have to do horrendously, and Frenson basically is going to have to win the final two races. The Constructors' Championship has ended in a similar state to the Drivers' Championship, in as much as that the leader has got quite a comfortable lead, technically not unassailable, but Ferrari lead the way by 18 points. That doesn't reflect well on me given how I was giving the game a load of abuse for saying that Ferrari was certain to win the Constructors' Championship. I mean, yeah, they're certain now, but at the time, that was really a bold thing to say. Even after the qualifying for this race, you would not say Ferrari was certain to win the Constructors' Championship. Now, I'll happily go along with that statement. McLaren and Benetton have both got 85 points. So that's going to be a very interesting battle in the final two races, the battle for the runner-up spot. Meanwhile, in terms of the battle for fourth, it's not really a battle anymore, to be honest. It hasn't been for a little while, but we're now 10 points ahead of Williams. Sauber, another team that currently uses Mercedes engines, but will not be using them next year. As we saw earlier, Jordan are leaving Mercedes for Peugeot, and Sauber are leaving them for Ferrari, a works deal with Ferrari, so that's a good deal with a... A good supplier, certainly no doubt about it, Ferrari engines are good, but it's almost certainly going to be a move backwards. And yet again, Alain Prost is motorsport fans' least favourite manager, and Jean Todd is everybody's favourite. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video where we finish off the 2001 season and crown the 2001 Drivers and Constructors Champions.